First you set up a photo shoot with G-Eazy, shoot a bunch of stuff on a white background, then you retouch it all, make them look as cool as possible. Then when you have a bunch of finished images, you realize you got a bunch on color, and that won't do, so you gotta knock all of them out, make sure everything's knocked out to white, and once you do that, you lay it out on a single document, and then you print that document. And the reason you print that document is so you have something tangible that you can cut out. Once you're done cutting out these images, then you start laying them out. Start messing around, making cool collages, find something that works. And then once it's digitized, you relay it out so you have a digital version of that collage. It's much easier once you have uh, something to lay it over top of. Then you drop it into a layout for Instagram and you post it to Instagram. Pretty simple. What's going on everyone? It's Corey Vanderplue at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to show you how I got from these finished images into this final creative collage. I had uh, G's management reach out to me and they wanted something very similar to these images. You can see it's very simple on set in front of a seamless. These aren't really the best. They're, they're kind of cheesy. They look really simple. I kind of shot these for myself, but you can see in the end, they were just kind of going for something like this, you know, nice and simple, very stripped down. But in the end, they actually went with this image and did some like really cool design work with it. And uh, I think it worked out great, which is funny because the stuff that I ended up wanting to be the creative stuff, the stuff for me, the stuff for just me and G and not for promo poster, so if you are shooting for a job, you should just shoot with your gut. Go with your gut. Do what you think is best. Because chances are you're going to be right. So let's just jump into these raws and let me show you. So the best thing about something like this is that I'm just shooting simply on a white background. You know, nothing fancy. Takes away all of the gimmicks. So if I just start from the beginning, I always start with these close-up portraits. You know, nice and simple flying through these and just kind of letting him do his thing. Um, I don't really try to control it too much. He's an artist. His mother was a photographer. He's great right in front of the camera. I'm just kind of letting him do his thing. And yeah, it's just kind of messing around. And when you feel something that you're both really into, then using that as a driving force to really, you know, sink your teeth in and, and, and work into that zone. But as we move along, you know, it's just trying a couple different outfits, trying to keep it nice and simple. I find when you're doing a portrait session like this, most people try to do too much. They try to get too gimmicky, but this is just one light. You know, if my my head is kind of like right here I'm, and the light is just above his head above me, you get that nice shadow underneath. It's, it's a beautiful light. It's very complimenting. Everyone looks great in it. And again, just cycling through, having having a time, experimenting, finding cool shapes, seeing what he likes. His outfits and his style were so on point and so dope that uh, it called for this, you know, very simple, stark contrast. Uh, so that's where we, we leaned in towards. And again, you can see him just experimenting, nothing crazy here. What was great about this image was the trench and I could see that as he would move there's like this little flap so you can see if i actually made him swing the jacket around and give me some cool shapes and that's actually what i ended up doing here with this image this actually started from you know this throw my crop on you can see how much extra space i need ended up getting another shoe from another image because i cropped his foot and then as we chip away at these, you can see I fixed the background. I had another flap to his jacket, which is kind of cool. Fixed it up. Then I added all these. So these are actually two different jackets here. One, two, and then I liquefied them to kind of bring the shape a little nicer. Then I throw in all my tones, all of my movements, and then you got a nice final image. Pretty cool. So as we keep going, still experimenting. I mean, this whole whole shoot only took about an hour. I didn't have much time with them. So I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. 
and as stripped down and as relaxed as possible and letting those small movements in the in the camera through the lens that end up being gargantuan when i'm reviewing these files and letting it uh, shine in the back end so here we are just really messing around there's really no rules nothing you can do wrong here tried a black background just for fun didn't quite work i really like the on white stuff and as we're going you can see this is one of the images he actually posted on his instagram which is cool but let's just scrub through this jacket was fly as hell got a couple cool ones here but again this is taking it very simply not going too crazy and just shooting on white i did the same thing swapped out with a green background because again they needed something like this which i could control the color of the green they weren't finicky on the green um, but look how bad this is i just for some reason i hate this and then yeah that was it got some cool images coming down here with this stuff again this didn't really fit their uh their mold for what they needed but i really liked them and when you see them come in as their black and whites i mean it looks incredible this is this is some iconic stuff so now here we are with our final images, but I want to take it a step further for an Instagram post. I want to make like this Platon-esque uh, kind of collage with this. You can see for his uh, Republic book how cool this looks. So I want to do something similar to that. Uh, not so crazy, but I'm going to follow the same steps that he took you know to create this so the first thing I need to do is knock these out so I love these one two three four five six images on white but what I'm gonna actually ooh, seven so what I'm actually gonna do is knock out a couple more I feel like this one would be cool knocked out this one definitely cool knocked out maybe I can do two of these and this one so I'm gonna knock all of these out so on the same color and then I'll show you how I made the collage. I'm gonna show you how I do one really easily. So a couple quick cutout tips. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna open an image where, that I have a similar hairstyle. Hair is very similar. Take my brush tool, hold option, click it. Come over here, and then I, you can see that I changed the background to be a little bit more even. So what I'm gonna do, and I have a perfect cutout of him. Uh, I'm just pushing the backslash tool. So come in here, paint this. You can see the hair is still a little weird. You can see if I use my B tool, you can see that it's on such a black background that it looks kind of strange. So what I'm gonna do is, you have very similar hairstyle here. So I'm gonna push Apple C, come over here, Apple V. Bring this layer to the very top. I'm gonna drop the opacity. And then just kind of match uh, the hairline. I'm holding shift so I can kind of mess around with this. And then I'm gonna come up here and toggle the free transform and warp mode. And I'm just trying to get the hair to be along the same line. And then push that. I'm gonna put uh, push enter, sorry. And then I'm gonna push my mask tool. Make sure my artboard here is black. And then I'm gonna push command delete. And then I'm gonna use my brush tool at 100% and I'm gonna paint the hair in. and bring this opacity back to 100%. And you can see the hair looks a lot better. Uh, let me just fix this line up. Again, this is only a two minute fix. You can massage it, make it a little better. You can see the hair looks a lot better. You can see flyaways better, but uh, you can see there's still kind of a bit of a halo here. So what I'm gonna do is take a curves layer hold option above it so it's only working on this layer and then I'm just gonna bring a curve up and make that match perfectly. So you can see that halo is gone. You can do the same thing. X, command delete with the big brush and just paint it in where the hair is. And there you go, you got a nice perfectly cut out image from where it was before. Put my grain and my crops on. And uh, I see that on white, I feel like he could just have a little bit of a boost. And there you go. 
nice and simple. So I'm not gonna save over this. I'm gonna do this a few more times and then I'll come back to you when I have everything cut out. So again, I'd like to do this kind of collage style with all of these images, but for an Instagram post, I mean, that's so dope behind the, the fist. I think that's either Mike, I think that's Mike Tyson's fist. Uh, anyways, so I'm gonna try and do something out of this head or out of here, but I'm not sure how I wanna lay it out. So this is kind of my analog way of doing it. So what I'm gonna do is open all of these. Once they're open, I'm gonna make just a little action Call it size. I'm gonna open the command. I'm gonna make this much smaller. We make this 1200. Eh, maybe even a thousand pixels wide. Let's see why in a second. Done. So now I'm just holding command tilde and making everything small. You could run this right from bridge, but might as well just go through them all. All right, so I did that. I'm never going to use that action again, so I just delete it. Now I'm going to create a new file because I have a printer that prints 13 by 19. Uh, I'm going to take that same color that I've already had, make it G, and I'm just going to copy and paste all of these over. See all the ones that I retouched are properly cropped except these three. So I'm going to do is throw these in a group. Create a curves layer that only affects that group. And then I'm just gonna bring this curve layer down just a little bit and right there is nice and even. This one could actually use it a little bit. Not a lot. There you go, there's our images. So now what I'm gonna do is print this. And as you can see, the reason I wanna print is for two reasons. One, I love the textural feel the paper has in your hands, but also it's for layout purposes, a little arts and crafts project. So what I do is I cut all these out, turn them into their own little uh, individual things so they're all nicely cut out so uh, I don't see the background and I can really work on laying them out. Uh, finicky little process, but it gets you used to seeing the images and uh, it really lets you cement the images in your head. So once they're cut out, uh, just kind of space them all out so you can get a good look at them. I actually printed some bigger ones just so I could mess around and then you just jump right in. Start messing around, laying out, see which ones work side by side together and you know, start making your collage. The thing is, is right when you're done, then scrap it and start a completely new one and just Go until you feel like you're happy and you feel like you've got something good. Uh, I usually do like around three to five different ones. And then when you think that you have something, uh, take a photo of it because once you have a photo of it, now you have a digitized version of it and now we can start working on it in post-production. Now we got this thing digitized, which is cool. I think I really like this one. I'll do some messing around here. I think I might make this one bigger just so there's no gap here, but I like the length of this, uh, especially since I'm gonna go on Instagram and make them kind of go one, two, three, four, five, something like that. I'll kind of mess around with it after, but now, and then all I'm doing is dropping it in where I had it. And from there, we can work with the layouts. Try and get as close as I can. And that's really all this is, is just getting it to kind of link up. And then once you have that, then you can uh, finesse. So let me speed this up for you guys. And then once you have them dropped in, you're just really masking out the edges. So it can be nice and close. Nothing really has to be perfect too much right now until you really lock the layout in. Yeah, something like this. And then let's see what else we got. So I feel like this guy should be above him as well. And then do the same thing, mask him out. 
Ah, pretty good. And I'm not going crazy with the mask because I don't know, what if I just simply don't want it change? I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm gonna make sure I really like it and then start finessing. And once you do this, uh, we'll, we'll go into the final finessing stages. So let me speed this up. This is better. Eh, it's starting to take shape here. So let's get this to the bottom as well. That's so cool. All right. Now we can clean up. Now let's do our uh, wild cutout starting from the left. So let me speed this up for you. So here we are with our finished uh, layouts. I mean, this is just, it's all an experiment. It's for social media. So I'm just trying to mess around, create some cool stuff and uh, experiment. Maybe I can turn around and get better at doing this and turn this into a job. Maybe I can hire for this. I'm actually gonna use this image uh, so the post will actually look something like, because I'm thinking about the thumbnail and how it's going to be presented on my feed, uh, I think the, the finished thing will look something like this. And that's it. Here's a cool social media post, uh, something cool for the main feed and something cool to just kind of scroll through. I'm just going to export these as separate JPEGs with the markers. Other than that, there's an inside look at how I made these images. Thanks for uh, coming along with me, seeing the retouching and the behind the scenes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Happy shooting, everyone.